G'day team, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to go through a handful of commands which should, um, should really help you with being able to visualize and clear up the information that you're, you know, you're trying to put onto the plans. And it's one of those things that I would think separates someone who's very new to the program to someone who's starting to find their feet and, and work out how it all kind of, how it all goes together. So. The first set of things we're gonna go through are the uh, the temporary hide and isolate things down here, or button. It's just the cool looking icon, I think, because it's got some snazzy sunnies. Um, all right, so I never ever click on this because I have all of these things set up as, um, as hotkeys and you should do that as soon as possible. Something to understand right off the bat with if you execute any of these commands, it's going to put it into a temporary state, which is what this button down here, uh, down here is for temporary reset, temporary hide and isolate. If you wanted to make the, that whatever you've hidden permanent, you have to go apply hide and isolate. So let me just explain that a little bit more. So if I was to select this, uh, this column tag and go HH for hide, we've got a big blue box, which is turned up um, around our viewport here, which is saying that we've got th something or many things temporarily hidden. So if we were to reset this to get rid of this blue box, you would go HR so for hide reset. And that has brought back this, um, this tag. So that's hiding just a single element. So that's HH is just hide element. If you wanted to hide an entire category of things, that's HC or yeah, hide category. All of these uh, all of these things I'm talking about are just in here, but I've just got shortcuts for them because I like to do things fast. Yeah, so if you're going to hide an entire category of things, or look, if you're just wanting to strip the, strip the view back just so that you can get a clearer picture with less noise going on, you can go through and go, okay, well, hide that category, hide that category hide category, hide category, you know, it, it, it just hides all of whatever you've clicked. Whereas if you want to hide elements, which is element in this program just means just whatever you've clicked on. So that would be hide that one, hide that one, hide that one. It's just, yeah. And it all goes to a temporary phase. So if we were to do something crazy and just go through here and just go hide. And then if we were to apply that hide, that would be in my shortcuts H A, but it would be the little button up the top here for applied, apply, hide, and isolate to view. Now that means that that's gotten rid of the blue box, but it's not unhidden everything because it's actually applied that as like a permanent hide to the view. If you want to find whatever you've hidden, you have to go R H, which is a little light bulb here for reveal hidden elements. So now we can see that there's a bunch of stuff that I've already hidden and there's everything through here which has been hidden. And if you want to unhide this stuff, you just select whatever it is you want. Oh, try not to click on things, there's a lot going on. Like that. And then you go unhide element and it looks like I've selected something which was a category hide. So I will just go unhide element for now and it should have undone everything that I've done. So yeah, unhiding something that is in the reveal hidden mode is going to bring it back from its permanently hidden state. So now we, we kind of understand that there's a, uh, a temporary and a permanent phase of hidden. Uh, the opposite of hiding something is, uh, it's not unhiding, it's actually isolating. So if I was to click on this tag and isolate it, it would actually do, uh, the whole screen would turn blank because it would be hiding the thing that the tag is actually tagging. So just to show you what I mean, it would go IS and everything's gone. So we'll have to go HR to reset that. And then we can click on this and then click on that and then isolate those two. So no, they have been isolated. I find isolating very, very handy if I'm trying to work out, it's just, just like, just to strip back the information, um, if I want to place something on a uh, on a bench top, but you've got a lot of things above and below, so you'll have like ceilings and then floors and then all of these face-based things that you want to um, 
you know, if you want to put like a, like a sink or something on here, I find it very handy to isolate it and then, um, then you can place a faced base component on it because it's the only thing around to host it on. Whereas if I was to try and do that in here, it's gonna, oh, it's gonna put it on, what's that? That's the floor above. And I think this might be, you know, it's, oh, it's gonna put it on the roof. It's just more difficulty than it's worth. So isolating is very handy for actually like placing components on things. And it can also be handy for, if you're gonna isolate a category to try and do some window tags. So if we were gonna, click on the window and then click on the tag. So we've got two categories selected now. And then we go IC for isolate category. We can now check what's going on with all of our window tags. And it looks like we're missing a window tag here. Is that the case? Yes, it is. Cool. So we put a window tag in. Very easy to spot information that way rather than trying to process everything at the same time. Um, you can get very, very creative with how you hide and isolate and use the, these commands to actually see what you're trying to do. Just make it like, this is a diff, like drawing these plans is not easy. Anyone who says it is, is working on just very easy projects. So this stuff is not easy. So do whatever you can within your power to make it easier for yourself. So a full command of the, um, of the hide and the isolate elements and categories will help you process the information that you're looking at on the screen easier. It just will. And that's why they're some of my favorite tools and I use them all the time, all the time. It's even great in 3D view. If you're trying to work out what's going on with the walls, you can select there, go isolate category, and then we can see a totally new view. You can see like this can give you a great perspective of what's going on and what still needs to be done and uh, and all of these kinds of things which are very helpful in complicated projects it's not so bad if you're drawing like a you know a, a carport on the side of an existing house it's probably not you're probably not going to use this too much but when you're putting complicated split level renovations complicated housing projects together it's good to use this stuff because it just makes it easier for you to see what's going on now the the next thing that i want to talk about is something that i have probably only really started using properly in the last year. And it's this little thing up here called selection box. Now I love, I love this tool. It is so handy. So if I was to go into 3d view here, there's a little, um, little button here, which says section box. So the section box is, it's kind of like a 3d viewport. So you can, you can drag the extent of it back so that you can have a look through, you know, let's say we want to have a look at the, um, something I use it a lot for is cutting it through the ridge of the house. So you can have a look, see what the ground line is doing through like the highest point of the roof. The section box and the selection box are pretty much the same thing, except if I was to select this wall and then click on selection box, it's going to, as it says, isolate the selected elements in its current view using the section box. So section box and selection box, not quite the same thing, but they are closely linked. So if I was to click on that, we're going to go to 3D view and it's isolated that wall. So now if I'm, if I'm wanting to put something in like, you know, a shower rail, which can be painful to do in plan view, it's so much easier using this and additionally, you know, if you're doing, having to do split faces, um, if you're trying to work out what's going on in a complicated situation, like we've got a, uh, we've got a door under some stairs here. So it's like, Oh, have we got enough? Have we got enough height? So we'll do the selection box and then, yeah, it looks like we've just got enough height. So depending on the size of the stringer, uh, that door at the, at the current height that we've specified is bang on. But that's a tricky thing to work out if you don't have a, um, a super easy way of isolating and viewing that element. So if you want to turn the, uh, turn the selection box off, you just uncheck section box and that's it. Really super handy tool. And it's, uh, it's one that I wish I'd been using for, you know, most of the time that I've been using Revit. But here I am telling you guys about it so that you are well on top of it early on. So I know I've gone a bit heavy with um, with the keyboard shortcuts today. So I'll uh, I'll explain 
a little about how to set those up. So KS is the keyboard shortcut for keyboard shortcuts. So if you wanted to set up some of the uh, some of the shortcuts that I've gone through today, you would just search the function in here, scroll down. So view control bar, hide element, you know, HH is hide element, HC, hide category, HA, hide apply. It's, it's all quite simple to do, but yeah, KS, keyboard shortcuts, and then just go hard, set them up. They're great, they're fantastic. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching as always. Um, I hope you got something out of this and I'll, I'll talk to you all soon, cheers.